here, and welcome back to another lesson video. Today, I will be going over the 9-1 text. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so as I had stated before, I am going to be going over the 9-1 text. So we're starting our new chapter today, and in this chapter, we will be learning about how to journalize purchases and cash payments. In addition to that, we will also be learning about how to define accounting terms related to purchases and cash payments for a merchandising business, identify accounting concepts and practices related to purchases and cash payments for a merchandising business, journalize purchases of merchandise using a purchases journal, Journalize cash payments and cash discounts using a cash payments journal. Prepare a petty cash report and journalize the reimbursement of the petty cash fund. Total, prove, and rule a cash payments journal and start a new cash payments journal page. And finally, journalize purchases, returns, and allowances and other transactions using a general journal. All right, so now that I've read over the learning objectives, Let's jump right into the 9-1 text. Alrighty, so now we're going to be moving on to the 9-1 text, which is the first lesson in Chapter 9. And in this lesson, we will be learning about journalizing purchases using a purchases journal. Okay, so there are some key terms that I'd like to go over before we start the accounting part of this lesson. So merchandise includes the goods that a business purchases to sell. A merchandising business is a business that purchases and sells goods. A retail merchandising business is a merchandising business that sells to those who use or consume the goods. A wholesale merchandising business is a business that buys and resells merchandise to retail merchandising businesses. A corporation is an organization with the legal rights of a person and which many persons may own. A share of stock is each unit of ownership in a corporation. Capital stock is the total shares of ownership in a corporation. A stockholder is an owner of one or more shares of a corporation. A special journal is a journal used to record only one kind of transaction. The cost of merchandise is the price a business pays for goods it purchases. Markup is the amount added to the cost of merchandise to establish the selling price. A vendor is a business from which merchandise is purchased or supplies or other assets are bought. A purchase on account is a transaction in which the merchandise purchased is to be paid for later. A purchases journal is a special journal used to record only purchases of merchandise on account. A special amount column is a journal amount headed with an account title. A purchase invoice is an invoice used as a source document for recording a purchase on account transaction. And the terms of sale are an agreement between a buyer and a seller about payment for merchandise. All right, next we're gonna be talking about purchasing merchandise. So we're being introduced to a new account called Purchases, and Purchases is a cost of merchandise account. And as you can see here, it has a normal debit balance. So it increases by a debit and decreases by a credit. Okay, next we're going to be talking about Purchases on Account. So as we've learned before, Accounts Payable is a liability account. And this account has a normal credit balance, so it increases by a credit and decreases by a debit. 
All right, next we're going to be talking about a purchases journal. So what we're essentially looking at here is a purchases journal. This is where we'll put the page number. This is where we'll put the date. This is where the vendor will go. This is where the purchase number will go. This is where the post reference will go. And then we'll record the amount in the purchases debit accounts payable credit column. And what the special amount column means is that if we were to go and post the amount to a subsidiary ledger, it would be recorded as a debit to purchases and a credit to accounts payable. Okay, next we're going to be talking about a purchase invoice. So what we're essentially looking at here is a purchase invoice. And as you can see here, this purchase invoice is from Crown Distributing, and it shows us their address and where they're located. This purchase invoice is being sent to Hobby Shack, and it shows us their address and where they're located. It was received on November 2nd. The purchase invoice is 83. The date is October 26. The invoice number is 2389. It has a 30 day term, and the account number is 230. Below all of that, we have the quantity, category number, description, unit price, and total, which is calculated by taking the quantity and multiplying it times the unit price. The total of all of those numbers is listed right here. And when we analyze a purchase invoice, there are a few steps that we follow when doing this process. First, we look at the stamp, the date received, and also the purchase invoice number. Next, we place a check mark by each amount. After that, we check the invoice, and number three is showing us the initials of the person who checked the invoice. And the last thing that we do is we, re we review the vendor's terms. All right, next we're gonna be talking about purchasing merchandise on account. So this transaction reads, on November 2nd, purchased merchandise on account from Crown Distributing, $2,039, purchase invoice number 83. Okay. So when we record a transaction related to purchasing merchandise on account, there are a few steps that we follow when doing this process. First, we write the date. Next, we write the vendor name. After that, we write the purchase invoice number. And finally, we write the amount of the invoice. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to be talking about in this lesson is totaling and ruling a purchases journal. So when we total and rule a purchases journal, there are a few steps that we follow when doing this process. First, we rule a single line across the amount column. Next, we write the date. After that, we write the word total. Next, we add the amount column. After that, we write the total. And finally, we rule double lines across the amount column. All right, so that is the end of the 9-1 text. In the next video, I will be going over the 9-1 work together. Okay, thank you.